goodness and mercy. Who is goodness on your side? Is it? Did you discover who is goodness? Yeah. Or that mercy is that one? And goodness is that one. Now behave like goodness then. And behave like mercy then. Bless the name of the Lord. We are going to build the cathedral. I know, I, I know some of you have not even seen it. I don't know where you are passing, but it's up there. And uh, some of us get so excited, we go in there three times. And some of the people ask, Unaona nini? Then I ask them, Wewe uwe ni kitu? Inaona imeisha? Tutamaliza. Lakini tutamaliza na wewe. Ukweli wa mambo ni kwamba, hatujapata pesa za mzungu hapa. Na wale wazungu walitupatia dola miyadani ni wazungu weusi. D. Davis. Na mwana yako. Kwa hivyo kama kuna pesa za wazungu miyandu, kama utawaita hawa wazungu, hawa wa black American mass. The rest, imetoka kwako. Mwangalia jirani yako mwambewe, sonko. Hata sijiu kwa nilu na wagomba, sonko mwe. Mwangalia kitu tunaweka hapa nyumu. Mwangalia. Massive. But I know there are some of you that missed to be guests the other time, and you are saying, next time I have an opportunity, I want to be a guest. I want to be a guest. So if you are here and you feel it, you want to be a guest. Can I ask those that feel like they, they want to be guests to stand? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there, there's one. But I, I have a feeling here, I don't know, there, is, there must be three people in here who are struggling. Why struggle? Stand. Here, hapa. Kuna watu hapa muda struggle. Tu wacha kustruggle. Simamu. Hapa. Wacha pale. Na uku. Watch up struggle. Don't allow yourself to struggle. Just say yes, and the Lord will handle the rest. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, at least uh, see uh, Josephine's mom. You that have stood, let's see Josephine, and we're going to walk this mile together. Or, hmm? or we can walk together after the service. We will walk together. Actually, let's walk together to the cathedral. It will be better so that we can see. And those, especially here, because there are two or three from here, as the someone goes on and you feel it was I, sneak quietly and join us there. Bless the name of the Lord. Uh, <laughs> oh, we bless the name of the Lord. It's good to be in the house of God. The house of God. This is the house of God. And we have been dealing with a, a topic, family. And I know those that uh, are blessed, they belong to the self. You have done a lot of discussion there, broken into various uh, uh, components. But for the cell, what we are selling, about Hamuna cell. So that she put up on a discussion, but I'll give you assignment. Now your assignment when you touch Makia to you'll be the teacher, but I'll give you the questions. So really take 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 home, take home. Well Kajifany Uko Lakini, how to the Rubishia at Kiana Nayo Ujimahakia. That will be great. The book of Proverbs chapter number twenty four, verse three to six. Through wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, it is established. So the building is wisdom, understanding is the establishment. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. For by wise counsel, you will win your own war, and in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. When we are talking about marriage, we're saying that if you are wise, actually the Bible also talks about 
this woman that is unwise, who tears her own house in pieces. And I want to say, there are also unwise men who tear their homes and families into pieces. But if you are wise, what you're going to do, you're going to build. And if you have understanding, which comes from wisdom, you're going to establish. And if you want to beautify the rooms, again, you need wisdom. So building a family, we need wisdom and understanding, which is very, very, very key. I don't know whether you have gone through some danger. It should have been 1967. I had accompanied my father for a convention in um, a place called uh, Mulunga. In those places, I did not know I would marry the dear there, but we got to conferences there at that age. The roads in the Moranga uh, were very good, but they were not uh, as if an alarm. Ile likuwa an alarm ni kadogo. Munawekewa kama ni watu ya jiris, munawekewa kalam kana toka karati kanaenda, lakini kebaba, kakupereka DC pareke kihumo. Watu ya kagema munawekewa kegine kwenda kupereka kwa diyo. Very small. But if you took the Gidhumu road, it was not tarmacked. And um, after that Tinguru, we went down and climbed up. And somehow, I don't know what happened to Jay Maguru's vehicle, the bus which was carrying us. To Kitoka, after we came from the convention. Going back, Ika slip, ika kidogo tu. Migu ya upande hui ka inuka. Deleva akasimama. Akanuka. Nafikiria ni mimi likuwa tu mtoto. Na watoto wanapendo wana mungu. Jesus loves me in this. Upande ilikuwa imelala, diyo likuwa na milama. Wanaume, wakatoka, wamama, wakapiga nduru. Mimi likatorokea kwa hiyo mlango. My concern ilipo toka was where is my father. I was only looking for one person. Where is my father? I know some of you have had calamities and uh, accidents and you have come out. Like a couple of years, there was this uh, Katrina that hit Louisiana, St. Louis. And unajua nyumba za America. Munatakaya kweda America sana. No wonder nyumba zao ziko cheap kuliko zetu. Kuliko zetu tunajengaga na, na rock. They call it rock. Zao wana chekanga nambao. So what they do ni kuchindiria mchanga wana kindira wana kindira unakuwa foundation. Lakini ukipepo upepo ukija haujui unabeba mbao unaweka flat. There was a couple that came to the screen. A man, his wife and the two of his children clinging to one another. But reporters are very nasty. This reporter ni, ni watundu. Mtu wa megongo wa nagari na wanakuja hospitali na wamambia asembe ya rigongo na mnagani. Mwikina wapigwa risasi, na wanakuja hospitalini, urigongo ukifanya nini. Na reporter, reporter, wana wabariki sana. <laughs> Ini kasi. <laughs> ni job, lakini ni tough. So they are here, this, this couple is holding to warm each other, but they are looking at their house which was depressed. So the reporter comes and he say, hey man, what are you going to say? about this, are you going to sue the government, are you going to... And the guy just looked at this reporter and he said, one of the things that I want to let you know, what has gone my hands can labor for, but what I hold, if they went, I would not have brought them back. The value of a family. 
I don't know whether you value your family, but this old man, all the value that he valued was his family. Nothing else but his family. So family is key. No wonder in this church, like now, I want us to sing a, a birthday song to Alice Kimani. Please help me. Happy birthday to It is a family. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Alice. Happy birthday to you. The reason is because in the family is where you said you are celebrated. You are a hero in the family. And may God help us to learn to celebrate each other. Because out there, no celebration, but in the house, there is celebration. There is warmth in, in, in families. And therefore, families are key, they're important. I also want you to know that every time kingdoms valued family, they became conquerors. Families. Families. When Rome valued families, they conquered the whole world. When Egypt valued family, everybody came there for food and shelter. When England valued family, there were conquerors, including here. Some of the old people that went to Panyako to fight, and they would come back and say, Abyssinia, Abyssinia. Because they did not know any language. They were taken by the guys from Britain. They valued family. America valued family and the word of God in the early 19th century. And you know what? They became conquerors. Everybody wanted to go to America. It was the land of freedom. It was the land for where there will be all that. But today people are running away from there because they have turned their whole nation into something else. They don't value families. And you wait. I'm not, I'm not uh, prophesying. I'm just saying they are not as mighty as they used to be. Actually, they are crumbling now because they don't value families. In our country, we used to value family. Very, very important. But right now, the issue of family has been attacked. Some of it is ourselves. We attack our own family. We crumble our own family. Because maybe you're something that glitters out there. And that will cause even our nation the embarrassment and the shame. That somebody can stand and say, me, I'm gay. At this is the way I've been born. Nobody was born that way. You only allowed yourself. You enticed yourself. The last. Because there is nobody, nobody is born that way. We learn those things. And we want to push them into our people. And thank God there is somebody who said he doesn't believe in God. And what did the church do? They just told the president to read the constitution well. And see there is no way in our constitution you can register anything that does not honor God. If they were wise, they would have said we honor the devil as God. That would be something else. But if they say we don't honor God and we don't want God, the way they were digested, even they themselves don't know. They only found they could not meet in their meetings. But that is what our society has come. People are clamoring to finish the family. The family. But how can I build a strong family? Those are the things that I want to bring to us. How can I build a strong family? Building a strong family. This family in Louisiana knew for sure that what mattered then was the family and nothing else. Whether we are going to write books or read books or hear people and, and so on and so forth, we go back and know family. And in here, some of you belong to many families. Like Sangura, you belong to us. We move on you one. Amen. Did you hear that? Yeah. There are some of you that come from various families, not one. I became a Murashia myself when I married a Murashia. She became a Mungai when she got married to... There are many families. And uh, now I have another family from Kagima because my daughter got married there. Amen. And my son is also marrying somewhere. And I will also become a family member there. Are you kidding? It's getting larger. 
And also we are a family of believers here. We are a family of the house of God. You and I belong to this family. But the most unfortunate thing, and somebody mentioned this, is that if you are not careful, even in a family, you can wander a lot. You can wander a lot. Even within the family, you can also be lonely if you are not careful. Four things that are crucial for us to build a strong family. Number one, it is the power of modeling. 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 How do you model your, 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 your family? Yesterday in our G12, we had a wonderful discussion. We were looking at people that have motivated you. And I say to myself, the people that have motivated me, what I do myself, it is because somebody motivated me to do it. Actually, I got saved, and the following weekend, he took me to go and preach. Now, to preach what? The gospel. Which one? <laughs> so I went and I repeated the same sentence. Same one. A couple of times. I think I did it a hundred times. <laughs> when I thought I was, I was so exhausted. And at that time I'm sweating. <laughs> if you don't believe in God, you will burn with fire and brimstone. Yeah. Repeated a couple of times, I started sweating, then I called people. And people came to get saved. <laughs> That's how good it is. It is not what you are sharing. It is him you are sharing. He handles it well. So I told them of that brother who mentored me that way. And today I stand and preach because somebody mentored, motivated me. And uh, we talked about uh, that motivation and modeling and, and mentorship. One brother shared something that really excited me. Of a teacher. Long live teachers. And all the teachers said amen. Teachers are valuable. So, so this teacher... <laughs> <laughs> called the brightest boys number one to ten took them to, the, to staff room and told them Teramusha and they were given Apanyuma they were really punished and they cried, you know you can cry that bitter cry I am number one and you're beaten I am number ten and you're beaten and the teacher said look at you one asked why did you beat us, teacher? Where we come from, you don't do that. Number one to ten, you celebrate. Then number last, you punish. But now you are punishing us. He said, I'm punishing you because in you I saw the potential. So I'm beating you to work out your potential. So one of the guys, the guy that was sharing with us, the potential came up. He could get nothing less than to get good marks to go to the university. What a motivation. <laughs> what, a, what a motivation. <laughs> so we are here. We are. And you know, we, 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 at that time when they were punished, you felt so bad. But you know what? Now you want to go back and bless them. Why do you want to go and bless them? Because if they never pushed your potential by punishing you when you are between number one and ten, Maybe he was number 10. He didn't want to tell us. But whatever number it is, he was pushed until he was able to get the number that was defeating. And I know some of you, you have people that you look to, you have people that you enjoy, uh, they, they mentor you. The power of modeling is very key. In Kenya, we are a victim. We are a victim in that uh, some of the things we do, Kenya, 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 oh Kenya, we are not the originals. We copy and we bring them here. And sometimes you have no answer for what you do. You just copy and model it. So regardless of the family structure, what happens to one family member or the decision one member makes, it will affect the other members the other individuals of the family as well, or the entire family system. This is especially true with the parents. 
Well, uh, we have always known that parents have a tremendous influence on the development of their children's character. We are also now discovering that influence is far beyond what we had imagined. What you do today, maybe it was influence. Remember, my father used to be a pastor. And by taking me along with him, he influenced me. And although I said I would never be a pastor, I finally became one. Because the influence, the, the way he had murdered me, I could not become anything else. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But it's good for you to know that as a parent, what your kids see you do as they grow is what you will likely see them do when they are grown up. What you do, some of them will do it as experiment or something, and they, ch they will challenge you. We are doing what you, we saw you do. So I want to say again, what your kids see you do as they grow up is what you will likely see them do when they have grown up. So what do your children see modeled in your character? Do they see a mom and a dad who have a visible love for each other? Or if you are a single parent, do your children see visible love for the family and for the friends that you have brought to Ian? Do they see truth, honesty, integrity? Do they see those things in action? Do they, do they know that you love them or your love for them is not based on their performance or you love them when they perform well? When our children come home from school, before they settle, we, we want to see something, letter. What do we ask? Yeah, you are right. Yeah, that's what they call it. Letter. And then the next reaction is, Nahi! Now, in Guinea, as we begin the one hour, but it is you will be challenged by your child. Daddy, let her go. You know, some of us are so quick. Sikumoja, where? Chunga, utai tissue, where? And I'm sorry, I'm told you. Daddy, let her go to compare. And you know, some of them do better than us. In fact, we go to some of them. In fact, be said. So it is important for us to, 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 to get that understanding in us. Do they have other examples of problem solving? Do they have a healthy um, examples of conflict resolution skills? Do you appreciate and promote their uniqueness? Do you model and encourage a healthy experience and expression of emotions. You allow them to express their emotions. Ama kijana wako akiri ono mwambia, wanaume! Mariagi. It is not true. Ask the men who have gone to the encounter. We know wanaume. Wanaliaga. Na usiweke machozi dani. Naweza kuwa kitonda ya tumu. Why are these things important? They are they are important because they are the core skills our children will need to become healthy individuals and develop healthy relationships. They will need those skills. They will need to know how to resolve the problems that come. They will need to know how, to, when a conflict comes, how do they have ways to sort it out? Do they see it in us as adults? Trust me when I tell you this. The reason is because what they see and what they hear is what they do. Wangombe likes telling us, monkey see? But I think we better tell them. Parents see? No, child is see? Child do. So they look at you. I don't know whether you have you have enjoyed your children when they are young. You know some of you did not enjoy your children. Unakutaka wa merara, na ukiodoka wa merara. Yani unakuta wa merara, na ukiodoka wa merara. Yani you don't enjoy them. But 
I, I would like you, two years and three years old, eh? who have neighbors have the same children, eh? age, eh? you come home at around three, when they have eaten and slept and woken up. And they are acting dirty and mad. <laughs> I'll never forget, may God have mercy. I'll never forget this girl in Cornerstone. They were nursery. And it was time for stories. Little children, when children are small, they give very interesting stories. So the stories they were giving were life stories. But they would say, Paukwa, Akawa. And then they would give a story. So one would say, So this girl, this girl stood up and said, Nikona Adidi, Adidi Adidi, Adidi Joe. <laughs> Stupid! Who take your Gariyaku? Stupid! Adonayo! <laughs> now, fortunately, the teacher knew the parents. He knew this girl was acting what? In the morning. Wiki Gali, stupid, the Taikia, stupid Wiki Gali. Karam Dodos, I didn't catch you up. I don't know what they have copied in you. The way you sit, the way you watch. You, you know you come, and then they are copying. Me, I'm daddy. And then you watch how daddy behaves. Kwa TV, the newspaper. Me, I'm mommy. Mommy, what does mommy do? Kitchen. Kuru, 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 kuru. That is the modeling we have modeled our children. Is that a strong modeling? I say no. No, not in our age now. In Deuteronomy 4, uh, 6, 4 to 9, there are two basic ways to teach your children. The first is the formal instruction. This is where parents tell children what they should and shouldn't do. We give them helpful information, often in the form of a lecture, or less helpful. We make a statement like this. How many times have I told you? Wow. The second and much more powerful way to teach children is informally, through the morals and values we model before them. While both are important, informal, what I call lifestyle instruction is by far the most influential. The most influential. One of the things that I learned from my father, which I learned it doesn't work in my family, and I have told you this, was one time I decided, he never said, he never said he is hungry. Never. Those who are our fathers, never. Kusema akona ati ya meshiba, ati ya kona jaa, never. Ukimunyima chakula, sawa. Ile vita itakuwa huko, itakuwa kari. So, na mimi ni kafikiria, siya pani kwangu. Woo, utakula. Oh, I thought I thought nothing to it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So there are some things that my father did, and he did very well. Because every time he was given food, the children will come around. And now Kiji Komoja. Was ever called a good job, Miss Shiba? Now Kiji Komoja.
the greatest gift you, you can give your child is who you are. The lifestyle our children see as model daily is much more powerful than what we tell them. But both of them are important, as I said earlier. Both of them are important. If a child lives with the criticism, he learns to condemn. He is always on defense. If a child lives with hostility in the family, she or he learns to fight because survival, he has seen it with the parents. It's like they have to fight for survival. If a child lives with shame, this child will feel guilty always. If a child lives with the tolerance, bless the Lord, this child lives and learns to be patient. If a child lives with ridicule, chinga he, boga, kitungu, son. He learns to be shy. He doesn't want to go forth because he will be spoken and ridiculed. If a child lives with encouragement, bless the name of the Lord, this one learns to be confident. I met one of those confident boys out here. And I said, I miss him. And why I miss him is the memory verse session. And you know the boy. Very courageous. He had a memory verse always. Now, some of you say, Alikuwa kirudia moja. Go merudia moja. But that courage. Why? Because the mother developed this child with encouragement. So what has happened? Boldness and courage. That boy will go places. I am. If a child lives with fairness, bless the name of the Lord, that child will learn justice. He will be just. If a child lives with security, this child will learn to have faith. If a child lives with approval, this child learns to like himself. If a child lives with acceptance and friendship, he or she learns to love the world, loves everybody. Why we have tribalism is because acceptance is not taught to accept others and friendship with all. Bless the name of the Lord. Model. That's the first thing. Model. What are you modeling? You want to build a strong family? Two is giving the gift of time. Number two, giving the gift of time. This key to building strong families is the simplest, but also one of the most difficult. It doesn't take any special training. Only a mom and dad who knows it and knows it, it's important then avails himself to his kids. Because healthy parents don't find the time, they create time. Because where is time? We don't, but create it. Create time. Create time. Remember what I told you in Deuteronomy? that you teach them in different ways. If you are to ask the children to, to kind of if you ask children to spell love to you, they will spell it T-I-M-E. Time with my father. That's love. We want to tell them hello if he he, but for them is the time we spend with them. Hell, the parents don't find time, they make time. As you study your children, remember Deuteronomy, as you study your children, you may discover certain times during the day when they are more open to chatting. A smart parent will try to set aside their schedule during these times 
and just happened to be available to talk to them on that day because children there are times that they can talk to you they want to chat but it is those times that we ourselves don't want to chat you see now they want to chat we are not wacha kunisumbua sasa hiyo mtoto amekuja dadi 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 imetoka if you want to help your children and model them well number one, know the time they want to chat and be available just be available homework 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 listen to them sometimes homework is okay but you'd rather tell the teacher they never did the homework today the reason blah 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 because you took time to understand them take time to understand your children maybe they are harassed by teacher why and here you are you also harassing them so they have no place si nyumbani si shule na kama ni wale wa kwenda miguu kuna siku hata kwenda shule kwa sababu hakumaliza homework sasa siku mbaya ni ile atakataa kuja nyumbani na kutoka pale ni chokora are you hearing what i'm saying when do they want to chat because there are time actually oh you, you, there are times that and my father knew this he would allow me to ask him anything we'll be seated somewhere up karatega kurino somewhere up on a rock and we are watching the at the school in the evening there are stars and from where we are we can see vehicles coming from gilgil lights coming and we would chat and chat and that is the time i would ask him daddy can you buy a matatu and you tell me of course but he did not have money when he died is when i discovered men of faith are men of faith but we would talk we would chat so that's one way look for the times of chatting number two, look for ways understand your children when it is the teachable moments teachable moments because not all times are teachable and you might be teaching something good but your child is not in the mood dadi kufunga viatu sasa hiyo hapo kwa mood sasa ni utafunga wewe mwenyewe na ufungue mwenyewe ufunge mwenyewe na ufunge mwenyewe but there are times that the little boy will tell you daddy daddy hebu kuje mwana ninafunga viatu now that time go down on your knees now observe teach him Amen parents. Amen. You want to build a strong family. Teachable moments. In Luke 5:17 to 20 actually is a story that Jesus was preaching. And as he was preaching, the guys in the in the room were enjoying but they were not getting the message. Until four guys came and broke the roof and dropped somebody down there. When he healed him, He was able to teach every one of them what faith is all about of the guys that were up there. Teachable moments. Are you understanding where we are? So it is important to know the teachable moments so that you can use them well. Look, the reason is because I don't know many families that are not committed to the all families are committed we have we don't have time time is not on our side time is not on our side but time is concrete time is measurable is a measurable expression of love when i give someone the gift of time i'm saying i value you and you are important to me the key to having a strong marriage and family is to communicating those values to our kids especially time if we want our children to know if we want our children to understand and adapt our values we need to spend time with them 1500 children were asked to kind of uh, tell them to, uh, ask, a question was asked to them and they they were required to 
to say what do they think makes a happy family. And the answer was doing things together. Doing things together. Those are happy moments. You guys that are maturing up, you don't know what it means for us to go and put on our swimming costumes and enter into a pool. You don't know what it means for some of you young adults to swim with me and beat me. You don't know what it means to play darts with you. You don't know what it means just to sit and talk nothing and just enjoy one another. That is more valuable. Oh, I still remember those days we would go to, to Mombasa and some of my kids were small and even pronunciations was difficult. But we'll enjoy them saying the waters of the tears. Oh my goodness, it is in the pool and there you are. You enjoy one another because you know what? As they grow old, you don't enjoy them anymore. But I'm trying to say even you that are mature, it means a lot for you to go with your daddy to work. My mother is over 80. Her memorable moment is when my son picks her and takes her to TRM or uh, neighbors or uh, what do you call them? I don't see. She will talk about, even now she still talks about that. Just to be at Java and I tell you chips. <laughs> oh my goodness. Are you sure that I mean to keep on my son Pale Java? I will not enjoy it. Time is very, very important. The, 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 the third thing that I think is crucial for us to look to is the part of nourishing love. Nourishing love. To nourish. Learn, this is learning to say, I love you in more than one way. The basis for this key comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter number five, when Paul gives some wise counsel to husbands and wives. He tells them the two activities in a loving relationship are Learning to cherish and learning to nourish the other person. Cherish is the easy, the easy part. Why? Because when you cherish something, it means that you value and care about it. It is important to you. However, you may not express it. That's where nourish comes in. To nourish. To nourish. To nourish is an action term that looks at what I actually do. It involves going beyond the attitude to action. The attitude of cherishing and the activity of nourishing are two of the key dimensions of love. I held the loving relationship needs both. However, most people find it easier to cherish than to nourish. No wonder you cherish, but because you're not uh, nourishing it, it's with us, but you need to do both. You need to do both. Let me try to explain that point by saying, giving you an illustration of this man. He went to those guys that sell flowers and plants. What do you call them? Florist. And he wanted some plants and flowers. Life plants and flowers. So he was expl explained this is the rosemary. It's a very nice one. When it grows, you can put in your tea. So he was explaining all the kind of plants. Did I say it right? Is there a plant called rosemary? Yes. Because I saw rosemary. <laughs> I thought, did I <laughs> Anyway, so he, he bought a number of plants, quite a number. He wanted to beautify his house. But then the, the seller told him, instruction, this one needs this type of water, not much. This one needs this kind of fertilizer. 
uh, not much, this one, and so on and so forth. But the instructions, hakusikia. Have you ever gone to a place, unafanya hivi lakini yamusiki? So this guy is saying, yes, 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 yes. I think he was saying, Maliza niende, nani atui kupanda maindi, sini kupanda maindi na kufunika. Anyway, finally, akitoka, akaona kitu ya kupima molea. Akapundua na molea. Kaenda nyumbani, he went home with his fertilizer and the measurement. But it simply says in the in the, in the in the bolea, if you have a can which is eight ounces or whatever grammage, whatever kilos, this is how you're going to weigh the fertilizer. Most of these containers needed only one shovel of fertilizer. But he said he forgot what he was told. So every of those plants he did three fertilizers every day, three. And then he made sure they swim with water. Sama ukame kwangu hakuna. Maji na chai. Nakuwa kwa swimming pool. Your guess is as good as mine. Because after three weeks, they were all dead. He got mad. Have you forgotten mad? It is your mistake he got mad. He, he I mean, pesa zangu. Because it was a lot of money. He ran back to that guy and told him, Wewe mongo. Vya, zimekufa zote. Sasa yule jamaa wakuza akacheka. You know, have you ever gone to a place and then you laugh? He annoyed the guy who bought. He, this is not a laughing matter. You know how much it costed me? And then guys, they realized this guy is serious. He might slap him. So he told him, now, do you remember what I told you? Then he went back to explain to him. I told you, fertilizer, kidogo, nasio kila siku, maji, isiloweke, nasio kila siku, Kwa hizi, nakini hile uweke nyingi, hile uweke kidogo. Nile kuambia. Ati uli niambia. Sikumbuki. So what happened? He had decided to really nourish his plants. So he put more fertilizer, more water. And he was a gospel singer like myself. He loved the hymns so much. The hymn that he used to sing every morning was like a river, glorious. So he made sure that all his plants were swimming in a river, glorious. <laughs> so your guess is as good as mine. Estella explained to him again, he had to treat, he made a mistake by treating all the plants as if they were the same. He had not given the plants what they needed. He gave the plant what he thought they needed. So the seller repeated that each plant is different. What may nourish one plant can kill another plant. It is important to learn the unique needs of each plant and treat it accordingly. Many families act like that man. Sometimes we think we know our spouse or our children better than we really do. We believe that we can nourish our loved ones by giving them what we think they need. And often this involves our giving them what we would like and assuming that we would, they would like it too. You know, sometimes you're giving your spouse what you want her to give you, but you are killing her. Why don't you tell her, unaona hii measurement, ti unataka unipe. Kwa hivyo, unaweza chukua, kutuma kwa hivyo alafu unipe. But it goes the other way around. Wewe unampatu, ukisema, mpende vile ungepinda, akupende, and you quote a scripture. Yeah, so you are killing this person. Killing this person, knowing, siku mwacha, si hai nuke haone tu. Mi napenda kuwa hugged in the morning. Hey, I want this. So many families act like that man and we normally miss the point. So quality nourishment involves stopping, looking, listening, and studying that special person. Can I surprise you? I'm still learning Alice. Oh my goodness. What a complex this lady is. 
So if you, if Raphael, you tell me you know Josephine, bless you. If John, you tell me you know Beatrice, uh, bless you. Uh, Sam, you can tell me Catherine, I will stop you. Because you are younger than those guys. But the truth of the matter is this. Sometimes I try to do just like this guy, myself. And I fail so before. And I wonder. Can you get that again? Yes. <laughs> you know, sometimes you, oh goodness, what do you really want? See your kutandika, see your kuosha, see your kubini. I want to finish. So you know, don't forget that nourishment means stopping, looking, listening, studying that person. Whether it is your child, whether it is your spouse, it means investing time, because time is the love language. What says I love you, I love to you, what excites you, what brings you great joy is different than what says love to your spouse or your child. Plan. Most of us have good intentions. However, good intentions aren't enough. Point number four, cultivating an encouraged and encouraging environment. A healthy home cultivates an encouraging environment. Four things. And I'll be done. Three. Four. Oh, I like that. Proverbs normally says three things, then four things. <laughs> and I've joined them. Three things, four things. An encouraging environment is one in which we spend more time building and encouraging our loved ones than we do scolding them and correcting them. It is one in which we honor them by speaking respectively to them with respect. Number two, an encouraging environment is one where our emphasis is on catching those we love doing good rather than catching them making mistakes. So that many times is a mistake. You did this, you did this, you did that. But can you pray to God that you catch your spouse or your daddy or your child doing the right thing? An encouragement, an encouraging environment is one which we respond to our children, their pleasant or their painful emotions, without making fuss out of it. What many kids learn is that if I want any attention, the only way the child will get it is either in crisis or the child will create some crisis. Now, when I do it, Hasa kukuangalia tu aone umwatend. Glass iko hapo aoge tu. Twa yanguke. Nani huyo? Oh, na anaanza kulia. You know that's what the children do. Nagonga inaanguka. Imevunjika na yeye analia. What do you do? Attention. Eh daddy pole tole mami. Pole 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 pole. I know that. Fourthly, an encouraging environment is one where it is safe for any family member to make mistakes. In fact, it is the only safe, the only safe place where our kids begin to learn that God can use our failures to help us grow. Actual fact, some of them might put something to you on your head or on your face. Romans 8.28 after it is all chaos, they said, Daddy, all things work together for good, don't they? So before they come to that, let's help our children. Homework. Now, now, but here, homework, I don't want to have sale. Now, I have a good job because I have a discussion. Homework. How can you begin to create an encouraging environment in your home? Get out a piece of paper and a pen. 
write down the name of your spouse and your kids and if you are a kid write the name of your daddy and mommy write the name of your siblings ask yourself the following questions and you can write responses at home under each person's name what are their strengths what are their strengths what is the strength can you say you know your daddy is strong this way has weakness that way what are their strengths what do they do well what do they do well what do they do well what what says love to them what is it that says love to them what makes them laugh How, you have you ever seen your mother laugh what makes her laugh try her to laugh you know some some of us don't laugh i was told sometimes ago that i don't laugh very easily even smiling you have to push it but that's the way i am but i try put a lot of effort into it so what makes them what makes them beam Minini na mpende shaga and unaona hata sura. Oh, unaweza mwambia daddy, have we won a, lo a lottery? Hii si ndoto, ni loto. Tume tume loto. <laughs> what you know beam, you want to know what makes it because I, I I tell you a lot of us don't know each other. We don't know the strength, we don't know the weakness. What is it? about them that you are thankful look for something that you are thankful then finally what are the three good things that they have done in the past week vitu tatu wamefanya wiki iliyopita watoto dada yako baba yako mama yako ndugu yako dada yako nini amefanya hii wiki vitu vitatu tu And then ask yourself finally. Hiyo wiki imepita. Or maybe you ask yourself how many times during the last week have you given them a specific compliment or a thank you for something wamefanya. Hiyo wiki ama mnaishi tu. Umeninyamazia kidogo. Mnaishi tu. Ama wandugu Umenunuliwa shati na ujaivaa alafu siku moja kwa wardrobe unaona shati unavaa ukitoka unaambia mke wako shati gani kaka wale dili kaka kwa instead of knowing there is someone who placed it there it is new you behave like everything has just fallen into bits Our Heavenly Father, help us to build strong families. We need strong families where we can be celebrated. A place where we can enjoy each other. In Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord praise.